that when we're uh, anything, we're not feeling good, we feel anxious, we feel tired, we feel depressed, we feel sick, we say the Surat al-Fatiha. And you can recite one time and for more power you recite seven times and so alhamdulillah has the immense light. And the reality there's also the tafsir of Surat al-Fatiha that anyone can watch the videos, read the articles to educate ourselves. So that when we say Bisira Surat by the sanctity and the secret of Surah Fatiha, Ya Rabbi dress me. So then if we don't understand that secret and we didn't study it from what the shaykh taught then that's to our own detriment. Best to study these realities so that we can be dressed by the immense realities that they're bringing for us inshaAllah. What do we got? As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Which zikr loop do you recommend to put on in the house daily? Uh, the one that we have for Du'ay Manzoor, that the uh, Hajjahid has for Du'ay Manzoor, I think we have that there as a, a, a zikr loop, inshaAllah. And the nasheeds, the salawat, uh, you can play them in the house and play the whole playlist and the playlist can keep looping. So alhamdulillah that, that whatever is convenient and whatever you want for your home, that the playlist itself can be you know in a continuous loop, it just keeps uh, shuffling and then playing, inshaAllah. Mm, As Alaykum Sayyidi. If, if we itch our head and feel negative energy even though we our head is covered and in wudu, what should we do? Mm. Then uh, get the uh, appropriate shampoo for, <laughs> for maybe you have a, a skin irritation. Don't think that every teaching is now because then people become paranoid and, and delusional and these are things you know people have to control. That if there's itching and you feel itching, no problem, alhamdulillah be strong, you're a warrior. Uh, but if your head is, is medically has an issue, you have to get the, the appropriate shampoo and you may have an allergy to skin, to shampoos, to everything. But not this is not a, a place in which you take a teaching and then now become scared of everyone, scared of everything, scared of going here, scared of… it's not about being scared, this is about a reality and how to face our faith. And that Allah want us to fear nothing, fear only Allah. You feel something eating and biting you, alhamdulillah. Make your madad and make your connection and your connection should be strong enough to push that away. But not to be fear, oh my god now they're doing like this, now I'm doing like this and then we get all these email, emails that you know it become that you have to be careful. Otherwise the people that you know will we'll begin to, to think these things are bizarre, it's not. It's only to teach a reality and be strong and, and face it and also there, there may be medical issues that have to be addressed, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum our Sayyidi, uh, what's, the Walaykum as -salam wa what's the difference between rabita and tafakkur and how to do it in a right way with you? Walaykum as -salam. we have a whole website dedicated to, to the meditation and, and make the connection. The tafakkur is the whole process of learning how to close one's eyes and sit and meditate. Each, each aspect of meditation is different. Sometimes you want to sit and meditate tafakkur to learn how to breathe. So then you'll make your meditation, make your connection and then practice your breathing. How to bring the energy of your breath and bring uh, good energy and take out negative energy. Then the madad and the rabita is to ask for the Naqshbandi silsila. You do the madad, ask for the shaykhs from the Naqshbandi tariqah, ask them for their support and, and for their madad. And that's the, the, the rabita, how to make the connection with the whole Naqshbandi chain, uh, recite the madad that we do at the beginning of our zikr. And that we have that on the app. You recite the madad that I'm asking from the presence of all the shaykhs all the way down to uh, Mawlana Shaykh Sultan al Awliya, Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, that their light and their dressing and the support of the Naqshbandi chain to dress you and bless you, inshaAllah.
Say, so is there a good angel on the left side of man or is it a shaitan? Shaitan on the left side of man? Left. No, there's too many cartoons. <laughs> these are these are like cartoons. That they're both angels, Kiram al Katibin, they're honored angels of Prophet and they're here to document and write whatever you do, good and bad. The one on the left writes the bad actions that you do, the one on the right writes the good actions that you do and that we pray that the good actions are far more powerful than the bad actions. And that when you make istighfar Allah wipes what's written on the left side. As soon as you start to make your istighfar all day long then Allah is wiping away what that angel was writing. And that's from the things that we know and what we don't know we're doing wrong. Or we, we know and we don't care and we keep doing it wrong. So that, that those are many different realities. That's why in our awrad for right now in these days is lots of istighfar, Astaghfirullah al-Azeem wa atubu alaykh, Astaghfirullah al-Azeem wa atubu alaykh. But Sifat al-Azeem that Allah's might and majesty that can't be understood, I'm asking by that Sifat Ya Rabbi wipe it away. I'm so small, I'm not even something visible, don't be angered by me. That your azimah to wash away these bad things and, and the difficulties that shaitan is putting upon me and, and putting into my, my hisab and my kitab and that expediation of sins then you give charity. So that this holy nights of bara, Shab al-Bara opening Laylatul Nisf Shaban, these are immense gates of forgiveness that Allah is opening that anyone who sits to observe this night, recite the awrad of the night, uh, pray Salatul Khair which is the hundred rakah that's 50 sets of two and they can do it on a chair, they can do it on the floor, they can do it standing, sitting, whatever is easiest. If you're older and, and the whole salah is too difficult you can do it on a chair, Allah doesn't require hardship from a servant and these are not fat, these are all sunnah and extra voluntary worshipness and the sunnah can be prayed sitting. That whatever you can do to do it because that's 1000 ikhlas, every three ikhlas is ajr of reciting Holy Qur'an. So imagine then a you thousand know, was like 333 recitations of Qur'an, entire Qur'an like you did khatam Qur'an you finished the entire Holy Qur'an. So on that night you're reciting Holy Qur'an is being dressed upon your soul and also Allah is writing the destiny of Nisf shaban what He's going to write on your soul, what your rizq going to be, what difficulty going to be, what openings are going to be. So expiation or expi expiation of sins is to give charity, give charity, give charity for whatever was done wrong, the actions that were done wrong, do all the awrah, do all the zikr, shower for that night. And then fast its day when Allah's writing on the 15th and that's the day that we're, we're fasting is it? The... So many, many blessings and this is all coming now in, in Shaban for us to prepare us and dress us and then Allah complete His ni'mat and favours upon us for Ramadan inshaAllah. So these Allah gave so many, so many ways to, to be dressed by rahmah and immense blessings. That's why when the Dajjal come. The Dajjal comes and says, oh this is a bidah, <laughs> why? So that to stop the person from reciting and to receive these blessings. Allah is giving blessings away, Allah is giving paradise away and the, the Dajjal puts his agents to go out, don't let them to reach paradise. Tell them this is an innovation. See there is no innovation in praying. You can pray hundred rakah every night and if anyone tell you don't pray go to the mall that's a dajjal teaching. So that's, that's not true. Anything that you want to do of worshipness Allah encourage you to do it. That is the greatest jihad against yourself is worshipness. It's how to sit and worship, how to do the prayers you have to do, how to do the fasting that you have to do. Those are the, the great struggles against oneself that Allah is the only one who can give its reward. So immense, immense that these are not something small but immense blessings that take away many, many difficulties inshaAllah.
And then we fast on the 15th, voluntary, whoever can do it, fast inshaAllah. That Allah's ni'mat and completion of blessings that we can never achieve by not the salah, not the zakah. So we're coming up to an event, we give our charity, so Allah expedite and wash away the sins. We start to do the awrads, we start to recite the Surat al ikhlas so the tajallis, tajallis, tajallis. And then the fasting on the 15th is that where Allah want to now give the payday. And said, the only way you can achieve this ni'mat is by fasting because the reward comes from my Divine the Presence alone. Not by your actions, not by your giving, those you did to hope to receive what Allah wants to dress for you, Allah will complete that dress by its fasting. So anyone who can fast, we'll be doing the awrad on Saturday, then the fast would be for Sunday inshaAllah, alhamdulillah. And we try our best and these are the immense blessings for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah described to Prophet your nation just can't get enough sinning and I, I can't give enough forgiveness for them. Means that your nation never gets tired of sinning and I never get tired of forgiving them. So you see all these shabs, all these barakahs, all these uh, shab of this, shab this, barakah of this, barakah of that. Why? Because Allah want to forgive the nation. And the dajjal come out to his agents and say, don't do it, don't do this nation. Go to the market, go to the bazaar, go watch a movie theater, do anything, don't do this, don't pray this, don't, don't fast that day. They come and say, the fasting is a bidah. There is no bidah in fasting. You're supposed to fast whenever you want. Sayyidina Dawood fasted every other day. So we can never catch up to, to the great souls and the, and the great examples inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah I have a question, how is the star of David Islamic? Because the star <laughs> doesn't belong to David. Everything is, its owner is Sayyidina Muhammad so these are the haqqaiqs of Sayyidina Muhammad that were given as a gift to the different Prophets of Allah When Allah declares that, you are my Khalifa and then tells the other Prophets that if you see him that you agree to follow him and that's why Allah Isra of Miraj to complete Ayatul Kareem. That when Prophet appeared they all took their bayat and prayed their salah with the Muhammadan salah. Why? To show you your risalat is nothing in the presence of the only Messenger of Allah yours are all imitated. So when you understand the haqqaiq is everything is under the command of Sayyidina Muhammad So Nabi Musa had a cane but does that mean you don't have a cane now because the Jewish people had a cane? Tirasa. But no, he had the cane of Sayyidina Muhammad He asked for it, the barakah and the blessings of that. And as a result Allah by the barakah of Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Khalil al-Rahman, he touched the water and Allah parted the sea. And Sayyidina Sulaiman asked, Ya Rabbi give me command over these shayateen that are attacking, give me a, a mulk in which you had given to no one. What Allah sent? He sent the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad because it was really Prophet sending because he said, I was a Rasul before Adam was between clay and water. Means I'm, I'm the Rasul in the presence of Allah who can talk to Allah without going through the Rasulullah So they were asking Prophet So who gave the ring? Sayyidina Muhammad who gave the secret of that najj? It's three points up for the soul, it's three points down for the body and the kingdom of Allah that opens upon the heart. These were all the haqqaiqs of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why I go back to the masjids before the Dajjal people took over Islam and all the masjids have this najj because it represents the heavenly kingdom. And the kingdom that Allah gave to Sayyidina Sulaiman which was by the permission of Sayyidina Muhammad 
so that we would honour because Allah knows that Sayyidina Muhammad is very humble and he wouldn't show any of these powers. So Allah gave the, the example by Sayyidina Sulaiman that now that he's taught you about how great your Prophet is, do you think that your Prophet didn't hear birds and that he didn't command the wind and that he didn't have all shayateen under his control? Everything was under the control and the might. That's why Ati Allah, Ati Rasulul Amri Minkum wa Izzatullah wa Izzat Rasul wa Izzat al Mu'mineen before the shaitan can even do anything. So uh, the kingdom is in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and as the, the Sultanate is returning with the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi he's going to bring all these treasures back onto earth and teach them who they really belong to. These are all Muhammadan treasures inshaAllah. Uh, As Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is it essential to know our seven names in the paradises? Thank you, I'm interested in that. Thank you and Allah bless you. <clears throat> well, Allah bless you, alhamdulillah. It's essential to know these teachings, right? So it's essential to know You have seven names, don't think the one that your mom and dad gave you is it. So who knows himself, who out of his nafs, out of a rabb, who will know himself will know his Lord. So the first Lord is what governing you, not Lord Most High, you didn't get to the finish point. But once you reflect inward Prophet is describing now tafakkur, who knows himself. He'll know his Lord and who doesn't know himself doesn't know his Lord. So it's interesting that the tafakkur people always talk on Allah's behalf and they don't know themselves, the non-tafakkur people. They're always talking Allah, Allah, Allah and no need for meditation and tafakkur. How they know Allah when they don't know themselves? So the whole path is based on this hadith, who knows himself. So we take a life in which to know ourselves, know what is governing me of my bad desires, my bad actions, my bad character, who did I harm with, with myself, with, with their dignity, with their persons, with their money, what, what did I do wrong? I have to correct those. As a result I begin to know myself. So the shaykhs come and give you haqqaiqs and teachings that, yeah actually you have seven names, are you going to get to know them? That's up to Allah That's why you make seven tawafs when you go for hajj because each tawaf for one of those names and one of the paradises that that name is occupying. And Allah can send the barakah and the blessings of these names upon your soul but if you're strong in your tafakkur, strong in, in your connection and then Allah is up to Allah if He wants to inspire the servant to know their reality and to really know themselves. But like we said on one of the other broadcasts, don't think, okay my name is Richard so I must be related to King Richard and therefore I must be English royalty and, and therefore I must… No, this is not the way, it has nothing to do with m mental logic, you know, because your name may be far away from what your parents named you. So that, that has nothing to do with it but just to know that I should know myself to know my Lord. And the first lords that are governing me, you know what make me to do bad things, not appropriate things? What make me to have the character I have? I have to get those and throw them out so that they're not lord over me and then I can start moving towards heavenly lordship because the lord that governs me towards the heavens, then the angels will begin to govern, the awliya will begin to govern all the way up to the prophets and Sayyidina, presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Wa Allah That's when you're reaching up towards that reality. You'll go through all these governing rubs from all your bad characteristics. Those are rub over people. When somebody smoke and say they can't stop smoking, that's a rub over you, that's a lord over you. So it's oh this is shirk, no your cigarettes are shirk. If you can't stop smoking your cigarette is a shirk because it's governing you. Your drinking is governing you, so that's a lord. 
Anything that controls you is lord over you. Once you destroy those lords then you now move towards the heavenly lords. Ya Rabbi I destroyed those I want heavenly lordship over me, that I want to listen to the inspiration of angels then they become lordly over you in which they inspire you to good, good character, good lines, good energy, pray now, fast now, do this. These are malaika that are all around from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. And then the good jinn that are lordly and inspiring in your home, do good, do good, pray good, do like this. Then the awliya, then you're following the way of awliya and, and following, those are lord over you. And they're taking you all the way up to, Qul A'udhu bi Rabbil Nas, who's the one on top of all mankind? Um, Malik al Nas, of course he's the Sultan of all. And then Divine Light in which Allah has dressed his ilahiyat and named him Ahmad because Allah's alif is attached to that reality, inshaAllah. As Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What question can we ask an entity to properly distinguish whether it is positive, negative, or our own imaginings? Yeah, ask uh, nothing from an entity. You say, Awwazu billahi min shaitan ar rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Madad, Madad Ya Sayyidi and visualize the shaykh who's teaching you is right in front of you and say that, you come dress me from your lights and you can recite the madad of, of the shaykhs and you should not be occupied with anything and you should not be scared of anything, anything touching you ears or if you feel scared, no they want to see if you're scared or not, don't be scared. But you shouldn't be communicating with anything other than the madad because the shaykh you know. And when that shaykh is there you know him, you know the teaching, you know how his voice sounds because you're listening to all the videos, everything. The Sayyidi dress me from your light, I'm nothing, I don't need to see you, I just want to feel your energy and, and that's enough. That's why I say read those the examples and the meditation and read it thoroughly because it doesn't say start to communicate with you know. The, the world that you can't see and go everywhere and you think that if you can't see it it's going to tell you the truth? No. So the, you, re, you recite, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillahi Rahman Raheem and then the madad. Because if the madad of the shaykhs are present with you then nefarious things won't stay around if you're asking for the madad of the shaykh as soon as the shaykh's lights come. That's why you recite the madad, they clear out everything. When you're not comfortable at home and you're frightened you recite the madad. When you feel the energy is not right somewhere you recite the madad. When you want to connect you recite the madad because they come with a tremendous light and a tremendous power and that clears out everything that's nefarious. That's like if you want to go get something from a particular place you have to put the exact address in the GPS. If you just say, take me downtown well you can end up in skid row. So you'll be very careful what you're putting in your coordinates, that's why the madad is very specific. I'm saying, Ya Rabbi by the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and I'm reciting these names of my shaykhs. I'm not just saying, oh, oh holy pious people in the area please come to me. Oh that could be, you know, that could be a gift for you from every direction, all sorts of difficulty. So alhamdulillah the madad is, is your GPS, be very specific and you know you keep that connection and that pushes away every type of difficulty inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Why are we given visions or true dreams such as war, riots etc. when we have no ability to heed the warning and move away or change our circumstances because of lack of finances? Yeah, <clears throat> this is the weight of knowledge. No one was expecting that you get access to Allah's knowledge and that you're going to change anything. Otherwise Allah would never send anyone any knowledge if He expected everybody to change things. So just being a watcher and partaking in Divinely knowledge is not that you, oh I, I'm going to get knowledge and talk of these realities but when your soul is 
opening and Allah show you things that are coming or show events or whatever Allah want to do for the soul, you just stay quiet. It's not your business where Allah is going to do and what Allah is going to do and, and, and it's the weight of that knowledge. So you, that's the life that we take is, is not to get involved. If you're told somebody is going to be sick, somebody's going to die, somebody's going like this, it's not your business, you stay quiet. Allah didn't need you to announce anything, He would have announced Himself. This is the weight of knowledge, it's, it has a tremendous weight and burden upon a soul. It's not that you just speak you know haqqaiqs but to, to know what, what Allah is bringing upon this earth and you, you're not supposed to say anything, change anything, move anything, go anywhere. If Allah want you to survive it, we said before, an atomic bomb fell on a student during Hiroshima and, and they saw him in Malaysia and he described that Mawlana was in that Hiroshima, he's an older gentleman, I heard something was happening, I was in my salah and I was doing my salah and I stayed in sujood and heard everything gone, 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 gone. I came out the whole city was gone and literally just had dust on me and uh, I was walking around. Uh, if Allah want you to survive, is there anyone who can say no? If Allah's Sifat al-Aziz come and put an angel just to sit right above you, can someone say no? See like the police sound, yeah, woo, no. <laughs> If Allah save you, you're safe. And if all the world put you in a bunker and you, you build 20 layers of steel and Allah want you dead, it's but one instant, pow, you're gone. <laughs> so who can run from Allah who can hide from Allah So this, this is what is called faith and this is the whole practices and all the energies and all these trainings. And the, the one whom their hearts and the madad is, is opening, they, they inshaAllah trust upon Allah and don't allow shaitan and whispering and fear to come into the heart. As soon as fear comes into the heart of rizq and sustenance and money and future, shaitan is too, too much playing with that person. And when they have faith and they, they do good and they see good and they're practicing, then they understood Allah is hand on everything, everything, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. I have a taweez, not Naqshbandi, and first time he was brought to my place, there was a strong odor of filth in my house. My sister wore hers once and froze on the bed. Should we keep the taweez or dispose it? And how to dispose it? Yeah, you can any any taweez that you're you're not comfortable with, and and yeah, you, you smell things from it, and you can dispose of it in water. So dispose of it in a running water, a river, or any, any way you can find water. Put the taweez in the water, and and la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul adim. So what can you do, inshaAllah? You can dispose of it in water and, and, and get an Naqshbandi taweez inshaAllah. Yeah. I think we, we discussed that last week when people have trinkets and things that they are concerned about. If it's very important for them inshaAllah they make du'a and they, they cleanse it. And if it's not that important then better to dispose of anything sort of doubtful and I don't know without you emailing us. Where did you get the taweez? Is another tariqah or just one of these you know 1-800 numbers or something because these, these people are you know they're very… there are different groups and where and they have different understandings so yeah, inshaAllah. Uh, as alaikum ya shaykh. Walaykum as salaam. Is there a connection between Nabi Musa, uh, uh, Nabi Muhammad and Nabi Musa salam because Nabi Musa split the water? And Nabi Muhammad split the moon, and the two are connected scientifically? Question mark. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that, that 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 that's an interesting one. But the moon, yeah, they're all connected because they're they're from Muhammadan light. 
So that's why I say, you, you're, you have to come and study with us and study these realities and everything is Nur Muhammad So where did Nabi Musa's soul come from? Came from Sayyidina Muhammad It's from the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah So Nabi Musa is a manifestation of a reality of Prophet All the Prophets are an example of the manifestation of Sayyidina Muhammad so one Prophet came, Khalilullah that he, he, he hears Allah very well because that's from the reality of the soul of Prophet Nabi Musa comes and, and Khalil and he speaks to Allah and this is from the reality of Prophet that I'm going to give you the ability to speak to this reality. Another one is he comes with the Ruhullah and the, the proximity of the soul of Allah comes from Prophet So each of them are the pieces of an entire puzzle when they come all together of what Allah gave these souls for you to understand one day, O oh Muhammadun Rasulullah What Allah gave to the, the one above all these souls, the one called the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah He is the ruh of Allah He is Khalilullah, He is Habibullah, He is the one whom uh, speaks to Allah All of those realities of Sayyidina Muhammad were given like the drops to the different Prophets to manifest these realities upon earth. So when the Sultan came then the earth would be prepared for the Sultan and the Sultanat. That's why we have many not like that, many, many not that what the what was given to Khalilullah and how it related to Prophet So what was given to Habib, what to Ruhullah. So they had many of these knots that we're describing. All of those gifts were a symbol of what is and who is Sayyidina Muhammad Imagine the kingdom in which Allah gave to Sayyidina Sulaiman Is that anywhere in comparison to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad what kind of kingdom then Allah gave to Prophet That's That's how you read all of these things, a kingdom that would flying on a carpet. So anyone who thinks like things are too much uh, then they haven't read anything about Sayyidina Sulaiman salam. Hear all the animals. So when you when say, can insan hear animals? Well what's this hocus pocus, they have no more faith. Sayyidina Sulaiman is hearing the ants speak and speaking to them. And the ants are speaking without even a, a mouth and then he was moving his kingdom on, on a carpet, he was moving them and controlling the wind and bringing all the birds and telling uh, the, the Prophet of Allah what is happening. They were like the jasus and then spies for him all over the earth. All that you think what Allah gave to Sayyidina Muhammad of, of power and azimat and the humbleness that it didn't ever want to show anything like that upon the earth. And he couldn't heal like Ruhullah that healed everyone and then they thought he's God. And because of those miracles they went and wanted to crucify Sayyidina Isa and, and, and thought that he's the ilah and Allah asking Sayyidina Isa did you say you're, you're a God to these people? Means that this angered the heavens that you showed all these miracles. And they finally took you as a, as a Divine God and in the last days they're going to say, God. And the humility of Sayyidina Muhammad that had all that power, never showed it. So, I'm bashar misluna, I'm a human like you, I'm, I'm no one. This was the example of our king and our sultan was to remain humble. No matter what Allah just give to you, you are nothing and that's why we keep talking like that, we are nothing. Whatever Allah gave to you, whoever you think you are and however you want to introduce yourself that let me tell you my history, what I've experienced, what are these? Prophet told to us to tell the people we are nothing. I'm a human like you, nothing, I'm no one. So that we keep a way of humility and, and not to be in the difficulty that other nations faced. If you show too much people will think that you're ilah. And that you're, 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 you're too high, you're godly and this, these are all the, the downfalls that can come to humanity. So we have to be careful. So the best of examples, the best of khuluq and character 
is the example of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu Assalamu alaikum dear Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa If I don't know Arabic and it's too difficult to memorize du'as, so what's better to listen to, Arabic recordings or recite it in English? Thanks in advance for your reply. <coughs> Wa alaikum salam all, all, all the tariqah they don't know Arabic but four people maybe. <laughs> so that's not a worry for you, all the du'as are in Romanized English and that's why they're like that. Our message is not to Arabs, I don't think Arabs would tolerate us for, for more than five minutes and we count them probably as a handful. So this message is to the ajam and we are a shaykh over ajam, so that's the reality, I'm going to have no shaykhood over Arabs because they're, they're of a different understanding and we have a few mashaAllah online and they're humble and they're willing to listen. So this is not about the command of Arabic but this is about the realities that the, the Arabic language is going to bring out. So that's why all the du'as are in Romanized Arabic so that you can recite along. You print it out and you hold it in your hand and recite the English. It says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, it says it in English. So that's how all, all of us have been reciting and learned and, and alhamdulillah. And by reciting that it has the, each letter has its secret and its reality opening into the heart and bringing the energies that are all around and activating the energies that are in the environment around us inshaAllah. So it has many, many different levels of reality of which English cannot control or carry one drop of it. One word may have paragraphs of understanding that you can't even put into one English word. So this is important to be recited in Arabic, you read the transliteration and you can also play the du'as of the Ayatul Kursi, the du'a for Ayatul Kursi, the different du'as that we have, you can play them in the house. That's for for one light and one energy but to activate and to move the harmony of your soul is important for your recitation. What you resonate, it's like doing the zikr say, I don't know Arabic but when we're saying Allah, 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 Allah everyone should be saying it. You don't listen to the zikr just by you know listening to it, you're trying to, to say it so that your soul is resonating. If later on you grow to be a person in which you can do khafi zikr amongst people where your heart can say the zikr and your lips remain silent, that's something else. But for now majority of people we have to recite. So we say, Allah, 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 Allah. Not that I listen to Shahzad say Allah, I have to say Allah because my soul needs to resonate. When it says, Allah, whatever's hiding inside of me is now going to be burned. It's being agitated and then it has to escape because I'm saying it, my heart is saying it, my blood is, is resonating with that zikr. It's not a spectator sport where we just watch other people do zikr, we, we have to get into that zikr, recite it and our children to recite it and because it resonates on their soul. The higher we resonate the soul the more powerful it's becoming, the more it can fight off difficulties, sicknesses, disease. With Allah's jaza and might inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.